I've only given two prospects a grade higher than 84. Today we have a third. We talk about Chris Dunn today. You're watching James Carter TV. Hello and welcome to James Carter TV. It's time for my scouting report on Chris Dunn, the point guard out of Providence. And although Providence may be a small college, we have a big time player here in Chris Dunn. Well, Providence is actually pretty big, but in terms of athletics, not the biggest college when you think of college basketball or football or anything athletically, but Chris Dunn was definitely a diamond in the rough. I really like Chris Dunn, and I'll tell you right now, I think we have an all-star on our hands. We're going to get into his strengths, his weaknesses. I'll give you my five-year statistical projection. I'll give you best fits, and I'll give you my overall prospect grade and also pro comparison. So let's start with his strengths. He's a tremendous athlete, especially when it comes to vertical explosiveness. This guy can leap almost out of the gym, and it's so nice to see, and I talked about this when I was talking about Jalen Brown, it's nice to see a guy that kind of jumps and leaps out of the gym because we haven't seen a lot of athletes like that in this draft. We have a lot of shooters, a guy like Ben Simmons who's very athletic for his size but can't compete or compare it to like a LeBron or a D-Wade in his prime or these other great athletes that the NBA has been funneling for years and years to come. There hasn't been many of those in this draft, but we have another one here in Chris Dunn. The guy is an excellent leaper and already standing at 6'4", 205 pounds, you add in that leaping ability at the point guard position I mean you're talking about some big time upside in being able to lift and posterize some folks and get some highlight dunks off I'm not sure he's ever gonna be a dunk contest candidate but boy will he have some highlight plays throughout the year I guarantee you of that and he also really good uh, agility wise the guy can move he's very uh, quick laterally and also exploding up the field uh, excuse me up the court in transition, tremendous athlete. Next, he's a tremendous passer, for the most part. We're going to get into a little bit of how he can be a little out of control and do some wild passes, but in terms of court vision and seeing when guys are coming open or when they're open, He's a willing passer, very willing, which, you know, you may say he's a point guard. He better be. But a lot of point guards in today's NBA aren't willing passes. I mean, they may pass it when dribbling up the old, a half court, and then they'll set into their offense. But in terms of actually dribbling up the half court, seeing things develop, and then hitting a pass that needs to be hit instead of just a set offense, there's not that many guys in the NBA that do that many uh, anymore. I think of like Chris Paul does it often, John Wall, but beyond that, not really. Damian Lillard, he's more of a, a set offense guy. I mean, he can you know do some isolation stuff on his own, but not great at setting people up. I mean, he's fine, you know, but not as elite. I think Chris Dunn can be at the next level in terms of being that kind of player. So tremendous and willing passer is Chris Dunn. We move on to the next strength, and that is his defense. First of all, he has great length. He's 6'4". He has a wingspan of, I believe, 6'8". And at the point guard position, that is big. And also, we can buy the fact that he's a good athlete. So you're talking about a guy with good length, good athleticism, at the point guard position, he's going to lock down some point guards at the next level. Because if you think you're going to blow past him, you're wrong because he has speed to catch up with you. And even if you get a little bit, just a, a tiny bit of an edge, like let's say you're driving on him, right? You pull up. He may be a little slow, maybe, and, and there's a good chance he may not even be. I mean, he may stick with you, but even if he's a little slow, he has enough length to make up for that and still contest the shot. He's going to give a lot of point guards a lot of grief and troubles. I think Russell Westbrook would have a lot of concerns and troubles against this guy. Damian Lillard would have a lot of troubles against this guy. And the list goes on and on because of that tremendous skill set and combination of length and athleticism is a tremendous combination and combine the fact that this guy is elite when it comes to getting steals. The guy can steal anything and almost everything that comes in his vicinity. If it's a pass that's coming even close 
to near his way, he takes it away. Three steals per 40 minutes, the highest, I believe, in college basketball. And you see it time and time again. And even when it comes to just reaching and just pickpocketing folks, he does that as well. He's more of a, you know, taking it from the lane or in passing lanes, but he can definitely pickpocket some folks as well. So tremendous when it comes to stealing, tremendous when it comes to also rebounding. Maybe not tremendous, but definitely uh, above average for a point guard. You're going to get a good amount of rebounds from him and that's been one of my bigger problems when it comes to a lot of point guards coming in the NBA nowadays a lot of them don't feel that they need to rebound but there's a lot of value to be had in rebounding even at the point guard position if you have a good rebounding point guard it really goes a long way to help your team be more efficient offensively and defensively tremendous skill set defensively has Chris Dunn and finally his upside again we're talking about great athleticism great length he's already a great passer that 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 comes with so much upside right there and I know he's 22 years old already um, but the fact that you have all of these skills already set in your game man it's tremendous upside and we move on to his weaknesses all right so he's turnover prone and for a point guard, I don't think his handle's very good. I think it's going to be below average handles at the next level. Yeah, I was talking about how he can pickpocket guys. Well, he gets pickpocketed a good amount too. And sometimes he's just dribbling and he kind of loses control or hits his foot or he actually dribbled it off of the defender's foot. Not great handles. You don't have an Allen Iverson here in Chris Dunn at all. Also has some wild passes. I talked about how he's a willing passer, how he sees guys get open. But sometimes when he's trying to project guys getting open, he's a little off and he can get a lot of turnovers that way. It kind of comes with the territory when you are uh, uh, so willing as a passer, a lot of turnovers will come uh, with that and that's fine. But I thought it was a little too much for my liking especially when it came to the handles category. So look out for that at the next level. Next, he's not a great shooter. Now, this isn't a big weakness, though, for me, because I think he's capable. The guy shot 37% from three and a 69% free throw. Now, the free throw is pretty bad. You know, it's not horrible. He's not going to be a hack, a done candidate, right? No one's going to try to foul him intentionally, but for a guy that's probably going to be driving a lot, penetrating and getting to the free throw line, I would wish that it'd be at least, I would wish it'd be at least probably 78%. It's 69%. I mean, you can live with it, but it's going to hurt every now and then. I mean, we're talking about you being less efficient than a lot of guys, almost every point guard in the NBA. And from the three-point line, you know, it, it's a little disappointing, but I think it's capable. 37%, you're not going to die with that. He probably shouldn't be a volume shooter, but it's nice to know when we're running a pick and roll or a pick and pop or what have you, and the defense goes under. He has the ability to hit that open three when he's facing defenders and defenders are not respecting his three-point game. He can pull it up and he can make it pretty consistently so it's not he's not a great shooter though he's not a great shooter but i think he's capable so although this is a weakness it's not as bad as a weakness as you may think it is and finally too many fouls and too many reaches we just saw steph curry in the finals game six a lot of fouls a lot of reaches and that's the kind of guy we're talking about steph curry led the league in steals and, but he also had a good amount of fouls as well. And I think that's what we're talking about here with Chris Dunn. He really compares to Seth Curry in that way. A little too undisciplined. Likes to get really handsy. Needs to be more disciplined defensively, especially if he's going to be a big-time player for his team. You have to be more reserved. You have to be smarter than that than always reaching in and getting these fouls. But he gets steals. So it's kind of like, uh, you know... Um, you know, devil's advocate, you know, a double-edged sword. You know, he's going to get great steals for you. It's nice, but you will have some reaches, some fouls. He will miss. Um, You know, they'll teach him when he reaches. They'll teach, and you'll have to look out for that. But, I mean, I like this guy, man. I mean, really, when we're talking about you're not a his biggest weakness being turnovers, but it's not too bad. I mean, it's pretty bad, but it's not too bad. 
and his shooting, but it's not too bad. And we talk about tremendous athleticism and passing ability and defense at the point guard position. We're talking about an all-star. We're talking about an all-star in Chris Dunn. Let me give you my five-year projection. Now, again, this is team dependent. You're talking about right now possibly the Boston Celtics possibly moving up. Or not, sorry, the Chicago Bulls possibly moving up to the number three overall spot and taking him. If they do, it's going to be higher than this. If he goes to the Minnesota Timberwolves, it's going to be lower than this because they already have Wiggins, Carl Anthony Towns, and Zach Levine that like to take a lot of shots. I went with 20 points per game, five rebounds, probably maybe four and a half to five rebounds, and six and a half assists per game with a 43% free, uh, field goal percentage and about a 35% three-point percentage. And that's really good. Those are, I believe, all-star numbers. Depends which conference you're in. He probably, and I put him in this range, he's probably not going to be a perennial all-star, but an occasional all-star with with these numbers, you can get in. Chris Paul's been putting up pretty much these numbers, uh, and but be, people really revere him and whatnot, and he's great. He's definitely great. So Chris Paul can get in with these numbers. Kemba Walker can't. So it kind of just depends on what team you're on. Are you winning games? Are you not? Do people care about you? No. Why? Why not? So, you know, it depends. But I think we're talking about an all-star here. I, I talked about with if the Bulls trade up and get him right, the Bulls would rely on him, and he could get 23-24. If he went to the Timberwolves, they don't need him as much, maybe 17-18. But I think we're really talking about a guy that really should be putting on 20 points per game at the next level, aggregate, average. Like, I, I think that's what we're talking about here. I mean, I think he's a really, really good player going into the NBA. Let me give you some pro comparisons. So, John Wall, again, a long defensive guy that can hit a three, wasn't a great shooter coming out, but with tremendous athleticism, tremendous leaping ability and finishing ability. John Wall is a better dunker, uh, definitely. Chris Dunn, although he does have great leaping ability, didn't really posterize too many people. John Wall does it almost every game. Maybe not every game, but at least every other game. So you're not going to see that from Chris Dunn, but a lot of similarities there. I also compared to Manuel Moutier, and I think that's the lower end. Now, Moutier can still improve. I had an 84 grade on Moutier last year. I liked him a lot, but man, he couldn't make shots. I think Chris Dunn is already more advanced than Moutier was when it comes to the shooting category. But this is the low-end projection, but I compared Emmanuel Moutier to John Wall, and I stick with that comparison. I, I think I compared him to John Wall slash uh, somebody, maybe Jordan Clarkson. or no, I don't think it was Jordan Clarkson. It was someone else, but anyway... I stick with that projection, but I think definitely Chris Dunn is going to be better than Emmanuel Moutier. I definitely think about that. He's already more advanced as a shooter. And also, I see a little bit of Damian Lillard only in this aspect. In terms of a four-year starter that can come into the league and not be a great three-point shooter from the get-go, but can average uh, 17 his rookie year, 19 and then 20 and then even 25 and make all stars and even have some 50 point games and whatnot. I can definitely see that for Chris Dunn. So I also throw a little bit, a little flavor, a little tint, a little throw, a little spice of Damian Lillard in this pro comparison. And let me give you my best fits. So if I see with my best fits, I just worry about where you could go. You know, he could go to the Sixers, but. I doubt it, so I didn't include them, but he would be a great fit for them, honestly. Him and Jaleel Okafor, they'd be a great fit, but I didn't include it because I just don't think there's a chance. So I only worry about where you could go. I can only come up with three teams because you're talking about the Celtics right now. The Celtics, they don't need a point guard. They have too many right now. You're talking about the Suns that have way too many guards as is. The Timberwolves, though, let's have a conversation. And I'm not a big Ricky Rubio fan. And I think if you can replace Chris Dunn with Ricky Rubio, the Timberwolves are on pace to win a championship in four or five years. I think you're talking about a great team. A great, a great, great team. If you have in four years, Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, Andrew Wiggins, Carl Anthony Towns, and a good center in there. I think you're talking about a great team, an OKC-like team. I think it's gonna even. I think it could even be better than what OKC was. I really do. They may not have a player that was as good as Kevin Durant, 
But I think Carl Anthony Towns is great. I think he's going to, if he's not already top 10 player in the NBA, he's definitely going to be. Andrew Wiggins still has the potential to be, and Chris Dunn's going to be a really good player. So I think he could even be better than that OKC team that we saw years with the Hard and Durant and Westbrook. And remember, at this point, Westbrook hadn't arrived yet. So keep that in mind. So I think the Timberwolves would be a great fit, a great fit. The New Orleans Pelicans, I think this is also a fit. Yes, they have Drew Holiday, but he can't stay healthy. I think you take Chris Dunn. I think you trade Drew Holiday for a wing player, and I think you get the ball rolling once again. Although I'm not a big Alvin Gentry fan, uh, Alvin Gentry fan I think this would be a really good fit. And lastly, the Sacramento Kings. I think would be a great fit. I wouldn't say the Denver Nuggets. You can't pair them with Moutier. They're just too similar. Doesn't make any sense. But with the Sacramento Kings, they had Rondo in there. He wasn't very good. They kind of need to start over, and they need a big-time player if they trade DeMarcus Cousins, even if they don't. You know, you're talking about pairing DeMarcus Cousins with a, a guy that's similar to John Wall. And DeMarcus Cousins and John Wall had so much success at Kentucky. So I think that would be a really good fit right there. And yeah, he's not going to fall lower than this. So the Raptors weren't under consideration. But they he wouldn't be a good fit for them either because they have Kyle Lowry and whatnot. So there you go. My overall grade, I give him an 86. This puts him in the occasional all-star category. That really means... Two to four All-Stars by the end of his career. Maybe more. I mean, it, it depends. If he goes to the Bulls, I think he could really be a superstar. And he could be even a, somewhat of a perennial guy. Maybe a five or six time All-Star. But that, that's just a little too high for me. So I put him at 86. And I think this is a really good grade. This is the third best grade I've given. Now, on the scouting reports, this is the last scouting report. I've made seven. This is the seventh. This is there's an elite seven in this NBA draft. I've covered all of them. Now from here though, I will uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm gonna release a big board, and that's gonna have probably twenty to thirty players ranked with grades on them, with pro comparisons probably on them. And you're gonna have my thoughts. I'll give you like some quick thoughts on all the other players in this draft, and I have a rank for you. But right now the big board is this. So you have Brandon Ingram, who I have slightly ahead of Ben Simmons. So Brandon Ingram, then Ben Simmons, then Chris Dunn, then Buddy Heald, then Jamal Murray, then Dragon Bender, then Jalen Brown. And I feel absolutely so confident about that. I'm putting my life on that. Honestly, I really am. The only one I'm a little concerned about really is Ben Simmons. Because he could be great. I mean, he could be better than hey, Brandon Ingram. I just like Brandon Ingram more. That's my only question there. So stick around. Subscribe. You'll have the uh, mock draft. I mean, it's, you have the mock draft next week, and you also have the big board next week. So stick around for that. And until next time, James Carter TV. I'm out.